Do you want to put your lead nurturing on autopilot with email drip campaigns? Want to easily visualize, customize, and personalize your automated workflows? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to automate your email campaigns, tasks, and more so that you can move prospects further down the funnel, inform your team, and generate and nurture more qualified leads. I'm also going to show you how to use HubSpot's automation templates, as well as choose from dozens of triggers, conditions, and actions to have the right conversation with the right leads at the right time. But best of all, every workflow you build can be tied to a clear goal. And after this tutorial, you'll understand why this is vitally important to your future success. Are you ready to rock and roll? Then you know what time it is. Are you a HubSpot user looking for fun and interactive education that helps you be better at HubSpot? Then welcome to Sprocket Talk. That's right, it's your boy George B. Thomas from SprocketTalk.com bringing you yet another HubSpot educational video. If you're a sales, marketing, or service professional looking to learn more about HubSpot and inbound strategies to help your business grow, then guess what? you're in the right spot. Look, workflows don't need to be difficult or confusing, but that's honestly the top two things that we always hear from new HubSpot users. So in an effort to help you out, we're going to show you exactly how to get started with creating your first HubSpot workflow, as well as a few things that we love about the HubSpot workflows tool. With that said, let's get into the good stuff. So here we are in the HubSpot workflows tool. And the first thing that I want to show you that we should all be paying attention to when it comes to workflows is organization and the fact that now in 2020, and of course in 2019, this feature was here too, was the ability to create a folder so have folder structures for your workflows. It will help you stay organized as you move forward in the HubSpot workflows tool. Now, the other thing you can do is you can restore workflows. You'll see this button here. If something has been deleted or removed, you'll be able to restore those as well. Why you're here is to create your first workflow so that it isn't stressful and agonizing and that thing that you just don't do because you're worried about the unknown. Now it won't be unknown. We're gonna go ahead and hit the create workflow button here. And what you're gonna be able to see is that HubSpot has given us some templates. So you'll see here types all templates or company contact deal quote and ticket. As we scroll down this, you're gonna see set a life cycle stage, assign new web leads, re-engage leads, copy from company to contact, focus on high value deals, just a bunch of nice little templates to get you started. Or you're gonna see this tab here, start from scratch. If you're on the start from scratch tab, you're going to see contact-based, company-based, deal-based, ticket-based, quote-based right here. And typically, you're going to choose contact-based. And you're also usually going to just do this start from scratch. But I will also let you know that you can do a workflow contact-based centered on a date or centered on a date property. But for this example, we're going to just start from scratch and we will go ahead and hit the next button. Once we've done that, the first thing we should do is go ahead and name it. In this case, we will just name it test. But what I will also suggest is that you would get very smart with your naming conventions. If this is supposed to be for the awareness stage, consideration, decision stage, you should put that. If it's for a certain year or file type, Type or something that you can get granular sales marketing service you may want to have that in the naming convention as well so again when you use that search ability even though you have it in folder structure you can find what you need quick and easy. Hey, we'll get back to the tutorial in one hot second, but I have to ask you, are you enjoying this video? If so, why don't you help us out and give us a quick like? Also, if you wanna learn more about workflows, automation, and lead nurturing, head over to sprockettalk.com for more actionable and tactical HubSpot education. Oh yeah, and make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell as well for instant notifications. Now back to the good stuff. Now, once you name it, the second thing that I would suggest that you do is come over to this more area and hit the description button. This will allow you to give your workflow a description so that you and your fellow coworkers or future workers will have a more granular understanding of what this workflow is supposed to do. There's nothing worse than coming back into HubSpot three months, six months, a year later and going, holy macro, I don't even know why I built this workflow. But if you fill out the description, you will be able to do 
do that. The other thing under this more that you'll use in the future is once you have a built workflow, you can clone it. And if you decide you don't need it anymore, you can also delete it right under there. Another thing that we can look at is the ability to minus or plus the working area of HubSpot. So notice if I hit this minus, things seem to get a little bit smaller. If I hit this plus back up to 100%, this will get to where it was before. The reason that you'll need this is if you start to build workflows with branching logic. Yes, that is something that you can do. You can add an action and you're going to see that you have if then branch logic. Now, in your first workflow, I wouldn't suggest diving into if then branches, but the possibility is there. And also a side caveat is if you're going to do if then branches you might want to work those out on a whiteboard then bring them into hubspot because your brain will easily have already wrapped around what you're trying to do when it's a yes or a no in that branching logic but for your first one we're going to keep this super simple but know that you can make the work area smaller and larger as needed when you're working in hubspot also you will notice if you minimize this when you come over to the working area and click on it you get a hand which means you'll be able to move this around and be able to easily view it as well. Some other great things that we can look at are alerts. HubSpot will let you know when something has gone awry. That means it's gone wrong. That means, oh no, the workflow has crashed, at least in one micro or macro situation. Also, beside that, you're going to be able to see that you can set a goal. And this is very important to figure out how you want to set that goal and what you want it to be, because that's going to dictate what your performance tab, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, how that's going to interact with people who are going through your workflow. And we'll come back to this here in a minute. Now you're going to see actions. This is what we're going to build. You're going to see settings. Settings is where you can actually say, hey, we only want business days Monday through Friday, or we want to deliver this workflow seven days a week. No matter when they have started it, just keep it flowing. Also, what time of day do you want these actions to execute? Any time during the day, which means it could be at midnight or between the hours of, and then you can select the hours that you want. Now, be careful about this because just during business hours might not be best. If you have a user who is used to doing things with your website or in engaging with your brand at 11 o'clock because they have time and that's when they started their journey, maybe executing these around the time that they were originally engaged with your brand may make sense, but it's something to pay attention to. And then also being able to associate it with, an, with a campaign. So in this case, we will say Sprocket Talk. And of course, once you have that set to what you want, you can hit save down here. Don't forget to do that or it won't save. While you're here, we also have unenrollment and suppression lists. So when contact enroll in this workflow what do you want to allow them to do one thing that's cool is hubspot does give us the little eyes here that we can hover over and it'll give us a little bit more context to what this means if we're going to select it and then when a contact no longer meets the enrollment conditions removed from this workflow now this doesn't happen a lot but if you want it to you can say yes there are certain scenarios where it makes sense but many of what you're going to be building it won't make sense and so you'll keep it to no keep them in this workflow and then if you don't want certain people to be able to get into the workflow, then you could choose a list. And a good list for this might be customers. If they're downloading ebooks, guides, checklists, just to educate themselves from your content that you've created, but they're already customers, you may not want them in a lead nurturing sequence. So therefore, they can still download the content, but they won't get all the messaging or the noise for them while it's great for others during this workflow scenario. Next, you'll have performance and history, but we're going to dive over into a workflow that has actually been built and running for a while to explain those. So we'll come over to this next tab and you'll see performance. When your workflow has been running for a while, you're going to be able to see the total contacts that have been enrolled, the active contacts in it, as well as then you're going to be able to set that goal and learn about goals right here. If you have not done that, you're going to get information on contact performance. So contacts met the goal, lost, completed the workflow or contacts are enrolled. You're going to be able to see all the measurements here as well as be able to select it what time frame you want to see the measurements of those. We'll go ahead and scroll down here and show you that you'll see 
uh, email trends. So emails in the workflow, if they were skipped, sent, delivered, opened, click, and kind of the performance. Again, there are the little eyes that you can hover over and get more information as well as being able to select the date range and view as rates or raw counts, whichever one you like to look at or need to look at for the decisions that you're trying to make from this data that HubSpot is providing you on those emails. You'll come down, you'll see emails delivered and what the actual interactions are. And if you hover over this, you're gonna see a whole bunch more information that's gonna help you again make those decisions. Scrolling down, emails opened. Scrolling down even further, emails clicked. Email delivery failure, as well as contact churn. So there's a ton of information in performance that you should be looking at, getting your fingers and hands and whole body dirty with the data so that you can make smart decisions moving forward. In the history tab, this gets a little bit more granular where you'll actually be able to see the people who have gone through your you're going to see event details. You're going to be able to unenroll people here, but you're going to see if the email was sent, if the delay had happened, if another email had been sent, and you're even going to be able to click and open the emails if you want to, to see those things and then the date as well. Now we're going to bounce over to our workflow. We talked about performance and history. Let's go back to the actions. But before we start to build this out, one thing that you'll want to do once you have it built out is definitely test it. So we'll hit the test button here and here I would be able to select myself as a contact I would be able to send myself the HubSpot emails and of course it's not going to delay if there's delays in the workflow it's going to just send me those emails so I can test them check them make sure they're exactly what I want and of course once I do that I can hit test so make sure you're testing your workflows before you set them live into the wild. Now to build a workflow, it's actually really easy. We can first set an enrollment trigger. Now there are two enrollment triggers that I like to use typically most times, but you can use any that are on this sidebar here that are able to be filtered by. Usually I love to do a list membership or a form submission. Those are the two that I love to use most. Now in this case, we'll just do a list membership and I'll do a search for page views and I'm going to select 20 page views right here and I'm going to say if they enter the list of 20 page views go ahead and apply that now here's where I can get a little bit more granular and I can add another rule if I add an and rule it's going to make the possibilities of contacts smaller that would be enrolled in this flow. If I use an or rule, it would actually broaden the amount of contacts that could be in this workflow. In this case, I'm not going to do either. I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. Now HubSpot will look for anybody who falls into the 20 page views list and then we can do some things from there. So for instance, in this case, I might want to send an internal email so I can click send internal email. And here I can enter one or more email addresses or use a contact property that stores an email address. So I could come here and I could select contact owner. And then whoever is the owner of that contact would get this internal email. And then what email do I wanna send? Well, I can come down here and do a search for 20 page views and I'll just select that. And this is the one that I want them to get. So I'll hit save. And you're gonna see that now they get an internal email of 20 page views. And by by the way, they should be on our radar from a sales perspective. Now, what I also might want to do is send an external email. So I'm going to just say send email. And in this case, I'm just going to pick one. We're going to pretend that it's the one that I would actually use, but I'll say impulse insights and I'll hit save here. And that's going to give me that email. Now, a couple things I can do from here, I can start to nurture them if I want to. So I could hit this plus again, and I could simply say, hey, delay two days. And of course, this could be two minutes, two hours, two days, 12 days, whatever you wanna do. And I could hit save. Now I've got a delay and I could send another email. Instead of doing that while we're here, let's talk about some of the things that might be a mystery to you. And of course we talked about delay. We've talked about if then branches. So if I did an if then branch, you can see that you'll be able to filter from any type of thing happening here. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. And you're gonna see that we can create a task. We can send internal SMS messages and we can even do in-app notifications, which is amazing if you're trying to get your 
sales reps, your marketing professionals, your CEO, your CFO, anybody who's using HubSpot to actually be in HubSpot and HubSpot to be sticky, sending those notifications internally in the app is very smart as well. We've already talked about sending an email and sending an internal email, but we can also say that we want to add these folks to a static list. We might want to do this because once they're added to a static list, then maybe another workflow would actually be triggered because they're part of that list. An example of this might be an if then branch and if the branch is yes, add to static list because we want to send them off in another direction. Think of a choose your own adventure type workflow with a bunch of micro workflows that you can bounce from one to the other depending on what they're selecting or doing inside of that. You can also remove them from a static list and if you're trying to deal with some sales items, you can create a deal or you can even rotate leads. So think of that round robin depending on if five, seven, ten people have filled out the form, you can rotate that to different contact owners as they come in so keeping all things equal for your inbound leads on the service side you can also create a ticket and now we can even start to get a little bit nerdy a little bit more granular with contact properties and company properties where we can set them copy them clear them increase them manage subscription status all sorts of amazing and fun things that we can do here and then really some things that you may not use but are here is that you can trigger a webhook and you can enroll contact in a workflow or another workflow and then where it gets really magical is any integrations you have with hubspot you can now do things like zoom or 23 or well whatever integrations you have, you're gonna be able to select those and actually put them in the workflow as well. Now, once you have your workflow where you are finished, the next thing that you'll do, of course, after you test it is you'll hit this review button. A couple of things will come up. You'll say, do you want to enroll the contacts that meet this criteria? You can say no or yes to that. You'll also see that contacts enrolled automatically when here and you can edit that if you so choose. You'll see the re-enrollment, which you can also edit, and then unenrollment relationship with other workflows. When a contact is no longer meets the criteria, your suppression list, contacts will be removed when they meet the following goal criteria, and workflows will execute. So you'll see when you go to save that or turn it on, all of that will be possible. In this case, I'm gonna go no, and then I could actually turn it on. But I do wanna go back to the edit because one thing that we started to talk about at the very beginning to finish this off, before I turn it live, I wanna go ahead and set this goal. If the 20 page views is the starting criteria for this, in this case, I'm gonna go set the goal and I'm gonna say list membership and I'm gonna look for page views again and I'm gonna look for the 30 page views list and I'm going to hit apply filter and hit save. What's nice about now having that in this one, I could literally go over to performance and this conversion right here is gonna tell me out of the amount of contacts who've seen 20 pages of your website, they have also gone on to see 30 pages of your website. So maybe it's 27%, 67%, 97%. In this case that we're talking about, you're literally getting a conversion rate on informed or informationally qualified contacts. So that is why viewing and editing your goal is important. Now, if I had this going where maybe it's something like 10 pages, 20 pages, 30 pages, 60 pages, and 60 pages was the most pages that I ever thought somebody would view, that last list or last goal for the workflow might be life cycle stage has become customer because then I would be able to see the conversion rate of out of the thousand contacts that read 60 pages of your website, 27% of those folks became a customer. There you have it. Head into your HubSpot portal and take advantage of the endless workflow possibilities. Also, we hope to see you over at sprockettalk.com. But until next time, make sure you're focused on being a happy, helpful, humble human. And as always, make sure you're doing some happy HubSpotting.